A common mistake that's made in hyperbaric, but really in healthcare in general, is if a little is good, more has to be better. And how that relates to hyperbaric is going right to high pressure or high percentages of oxygen right out of the gate, even when either the issue that they're trying to solve for would do better at lower pressure, or that sometimes there's multiple issues. And we need to be sensitive to the idea that with multiple issues, we might use different protocols and different pressures for different problems. And this video is about trying to understand how to best deliver hyperbaric oxygen when we're trying to solve for more than one issue. In some cases, when a patient or a client is reaching out to you, they already know, hey, here's the issue that I have, or here's the problem that I'm trying to solve for, or here's a few problems that I've had over the years, and I'm hoping that hyperbaric can help with X, Y, or Z. In other cases, patients come to you with a specific idea or a specific concern. You start to develop the protocol only to find out that there was other issues that they didn't tell you right away. So the first part of this video is just to say, it's critical that you take a very detailed history to understand a person's full story. You wanna know all their health concerns and you wanna know all of their health goals. Because when applying hyperbaric, different amounts of pressure and oxygen are going to be applied to different health concerns or to different health goals. And if we don't know the whole story, we won't be able to deliver an optimal protocol that addresses the whole story. Generally speaking, and we teach this in our certification course, different tissues absorb oxygen at different rates. Different tissues consume oxygen at different rates. And so when we have a variety of different concerns or a variety of different goals, we want to apply the right pressures and the right percentages of oxygen to help solve those issues or to meet those goals. Understanding how different cells respond to different amounts of oxygen is really important. I'll give you a few examples here. So the central nervous system is the most sensitive to high levels of oxygen. Central nervous system oxygen toxicity, which is a thing, and we've done a few videos on that. If you're not familiar with central nervous system oxygen toxicity, please check out those videos. But the reason that there's central nervous system oxygen toxicity, and we're not talking about muscle tissue oxygen toxicity is because you're going to exceed the central nervous system's capacity to tolerate oxygen before any other tissue. Now, why is that important? Let's use this as an example. You have a patient who is post-surgical looking for post-surgical recovery. Now, for post-surgical recovery, you can use a range of pressures, but let's just say in more traditional settings, you may choose to use higher pressure. So we're going to use two atmospheres for post-surgical recovery. At the same time, that same person has a history of multiple concussions, one of which may have been more recently. And so now there's trauma to the central nervous system, there's acute inflammation to the central nervous system, and we're trying to prepare for or heal from a post-surgical issue that could be done at higher pressure. When the central nervous system is compromised through either trauma, damage, or inflammation, it's going to be even more sensitive to that level of oxygen, meaning the risk of oxygen toxicity is even much higher. And so what we need to do is we need to treat them at a pressure that the central nervous system will tolerate and even heal with before trying to push that person into those higher pressures where those soft tissues may heal even faster. In a perfect situation, which many are not, maybe we were having these conversations earlier knowing that this person was going to have a surgery, they were gonna to wanna to use hyperbaric to help them heal from that surgery, and we knew that they had this history of central nervous system trauma. So what we did was we spent weeks prior to the surgery helping to expose the central nervous system to varying degrees of oxygen, possibly helping to heal the central nervous system, improve circulation, improve cellular metabolism, so that by the time they had the surgery, we can go right into a post-surgical protocol at higher pressure without any issue. That would be ideal. In addition to that, by doing all of those pre-treatments before surgery, we've also pre-treated the soft tissues, thereby likely increasing what the response and healing rate was gonna be from the surgery in the first place. So again, not just jumping right into a high pressure situation on somebody that has this history of central nervous system damage, trauma, or inflammation. Now, if I didn't take a good history on this person, they just wanted to come in for some hyperbaric sessions post-surgical to improve their healing, and I didn't know that they had that history, well, then I might jump to higher pressure quicker, and now I'm increasing my risk of central nervous system oxygen toxicity without even realizing why. 
Here's another example. There's quite a bit of research on using hyperbaric oxygen for fibromyalgia, and the response rate seems to be really high. Most of the research for fibromyalgia has been done at two atmospheres or more. However, what's another thing we know about people with fibromyalgia? Well, number one, their autonomic nervous system is likely already pretty taxed. They may have one or more autoimmune diseases underneath this fibromyalgia diagnosis, and ultimately they could be very sensitive to oxidative stress. We also know that hyperbaric is an oxidative therapy. And so is it possible that putting this person at two atmospheres or more right out of the gate would overexpose them, causing an increased oxidative stress response that they may not necessarily respond well to? And so if we understood their story, knew that they had fibromyalgia, but also got a better feeling for where they were on the oxidative stress scale, and or understood if there were other comorbidities that might make them more sensitive to oxygen, we would also know that we should start more gently. We should get them more frequent exposures at lower pressures, allowing the body to start to heal, reducing the inflammation, reducing the oxidative stress, upregulating their body's antioxidant system, and ultimately just preparing their body so that if we even need to get to two atmospheres or more, that body is prepared to handle it not just jumping right into the two plus atmospheres that the research paper we read said we were supposed to do. There are so many examples of this type of scenario, but what I'm trying to get you to understand is there may be a protocol that you have in mind, either that you've used before and so you have clinical experience with it, or that you read a research paper that said for this condition, you ought to do this pressure and this percentage of oxygen for this number of sessions over this period of time. And I'm not telling you that you shouldn't do those protocols, but what I am suggesting is that getting a good history, understanding the person's full story, and then understanding that different tissues and cells use and metabolize oxygen at different rates. And so as a consideration, once we know their whole story, we may choose to prepare that body at lower pressures and lower percentages of oxygen for two reasons. The first is, by doing lower pressures and lower percentages of oxygen, we're preparing the body to be able to handle those higher pressures if we need to go there. However, also by exposing this person to lower pressures and lower percentages of oxygen, you may also get a tremendous healing response. One of our jobs is to first do no harm. And so if we can complete a protocol and improve that patient's experience and meet their needs and solve their issues or help them meet their goals, and we've done so by lowering the risk, we should do that every time. And maybe all they needed to heal was that lower pressure protocol. And at the same time, if they needed more, now they're prepared to handle more. We've worked through other potential low pressure problems, preparing the body to now be able to tolerate those higher pressures and now get the protocol that they needed. So I hope this helps you understand that ultimately different protocols might be necessary for different people. You may have 25 people with the same diagnosis, but we're not treating the disease in the first place. We're applying hyperbaric for that person and understanding that person's whole story is gonna allow you to better design protocols for the people coming in and make sure that you're keeping people safe, that you're applying the therapy properly, and you're getting the results that you and they both want. I appreciate your time and attention and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.